right, so we're going to start to dive into probability. So the probability of an event. All right, so the probability of event A denoted by P with some parentheses and the letter A in the middle is the ratio of the number of outcomes favorable to A to the total number of outcomes in the sample space. And it's denoted again P, there's some parentheses, and an A right here in between the parentheses, number of outcomes favorable to A, number of outcomes in the sample space. So things I wanna mention as we get going through this, when you see the word ratio there, right? Ratio, this is a fraction, this is a probability, this is a proportion, you can write this as a percentage, but every probability in this class is a number between zero and one or a percentage between 0% and 100%. So every probability is a number between 0 and 1, or a percentage between 0% and 100%. Okay. So you'll never tell me in here that a probability is 1.7 or five, it's gotta be a decimal between zero and one, or a percentage between 0% and 100%. And I'm gonna be a stickler for notation. So let's talk about notation. When it comes to a probability, you will have this capital P here with some parentheses, all right? So it's always gonna be P, some parentheses, and then an equal sign. And here you will have words, uh, or I would say letters, and you might say, well, a letter is part of a word, agreed. Um, if it's event A, put event A in here. If it's the number of female females on, I don't know, an applicant pool, put those words in there. But you'll hear me talk about P with some crap in the parentheses. I want some P, all right, or I want the letter P, I should say, and I want parentheses and I want something in here. And then you're gonna have your equal sign and immediately to the right of that equal sign is your number between zero and one. And like I said, I am gonna be a stickler for notation. But when you hear probability, right? It's all those P words, right? So we have, it's a proportion, right? It's a fraction. It's a ratio. It's a relative frequency. It's a percentage. All of those, those numbers that we talked about before still apply here. So we're gonna have a ratio. We're gonna have a whole number on the numerator and a whole number on the denominator, or potentially a decimal on the numerator and a decimal on the denominator. But ultimately, you owe me a number between zero and one. So number of outcomes favorable to event A over number of outcomes of, um, in the sample space. So let's go back to our experiment consisting of, a ran of randomly selecting one digit from the digit table. And we had event A and event B. I'm just gonna fill in here our sample space. If you remember, it was zero through nine. So we have all of the same information we used to have. Okay, so if I do that, I think I left the comma off there. All right, so let's, let's take a look at this. So I wanna calculate the probability of event A. So as we go through this, I see capital P, I see some parentheses and I have a letter in there, so I will put the equal sign. All right, so here comes my fraction the number of outcomes favorable to A. And there was one, two, three, four, five, six outcomes favorable to A. And then I need the number of outcomes in my sample space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten outcomes favorable to my sample space. If I look at that ratio, that is six out of ten. So you could reduce that to three out of five. That's a fine answer. You could also write that as the decimal 0 0.60, or you could write it as 60%. Okay, and if you're wondering where I'm getting that decimal 0 0.60, let me just go to my calculator for a moment. And I'm going to do, can we see it? Yep, let me get rid of all that. 6 divided by 10 is 0.6, or you could have done 3 divided by 5, also 0.6. Okay, so totally viable option there. So these are the three correct answers. I don't care which one you give me, one of them would be awesome. Six out of 10 is not correct because that fraction is not reduced. All right, so let's try this probability. So it says calculate this probability. You know you owe me a number between zero and one. 
So I'm going to put the equal sign. As soon as you have that right parentheses, you can put the equal sign. So I need a ratio. So this will say number of outcomes favorable to B in ratio to the number of outcomes in the sample space. So how many outcomes did we have in event B? One, two, three, four. How many outcomes were in the sample space? 10. If I reduce this, this is two out of five. If I plug that into my calculator, it's 0 0.40, or you could write me 40%. Okay, and from here on in, I'm just gonna go with the decimal version. That's the one I tend to prefer, so that's the one you're gonna see me write. And let's just take a, a quick zoom out and see what they're trying to say here. So this is saying, if you're gonna pick one digit from the digit table, what's the likelihood, oh wait, <coughs> excuse me, what's the likelihood that it comes from event A? Well, if I'm going to my random digit table and I'm picking one digit at a time, right? Like, let's say I go here, I picked a seven. That's fine, what was the likelihood that any one digit I picked was gonna be in event A? Well, there's six digits in event A, so I've got a six out of 10 shot of picking a digit in event A. I happen to circle the seven here, just because. So that one wasn't in event A, no problem. If I pick the one next to it, one, that was in event A. So again, all these digits are either in event A or not in event A. And since there's six digits overall that are in event A, there's about a 60% chance that I'll pick a number that was in event A. And kind of continuing on that, since there's four digits that are in event, in event B, if I'm gonna pick one of these 10, there's a 40% chance that it's in event B. All right, for A and B, well, now we wanna make that list. We made it on the other page, but let's review it. So for A and B, oops, let me write that correctly. All right, so we've got event A, we've got event B, and they're separated by the word and. And is looking for you to find the overlap between the two lists. And if you remember this from the other page, the overlap was just at three, four, five. So three, four, five was common to both of these lists, excuse me, both of these events. So if I want the probability of A and B, I'm looking at another fraction, okay? This is the number of outcomes in A and B. So the number of outcomes, excuse me, favorable to A and B, because that's what's in our parentheses right now. How many outcomes are in A and B? Three. How many outcomes are in our sample space? Still 10. So my answer is 30% or the decimal 0 0.30, okay? But again, notationally, let's just take a step back so that we're all on the same page. Every time you have a probability question, it should end with a decimal or a percentage, okay? If you wanna leave it in fraction form, that's fine. So I should say fraction, decimal, or percentage, all right? You always need capital P with some parentheses and some kind of wording or letters should be in these parentheses. Once you have the right parentheses, give me an equal sign and that's where the number comes in. So things I don't want, so note. I see this a lot. I'll get the probability of A and B equals the probability of 0 0.30. All right, so this is bad news bears. You don't want numbers in the middle of your parentheses. This probability is equal to 0 0.30, but we don't put 0 0.30 inside those parentheses, okay? All right, so the next thing I'm asked to find is the probability of A or B. So let me go off to the side here. Let's think about, about what's in A or B. We did it on the other page, but it's, it's worth repeating since this is still relatively new to us. So I wanna do A or B. So if I think about A or B, do I wanna take the combination of my list or do I want the overlap? Well, anytime you have the word or, you wanna combine them. And I can ignore repeats, but if I'm gonna combine these two lists, I'm looking at zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And how many numbers, how many outcomes are in that, it looks like I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'll put the equal sign here. I've got seven out of my sample space of 10 or 70%, okay? So whatever's in the parentheses, find out how many outcomes are in there. There's your numerator. How many outcomes are in your sample space? Denominator. Calculate that fraction and you've got an answer. All right, let's think about a complement. 
So these are all of the outcomes that are in A, excuse me, that are not in A. So A is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is in A, and all of these outcomes are in my sample space, then A complement will be all the numbers in this list that were not in this list. So here we go. All of the numbers in the sample space that were not in event A are 6, 7, 8, and 9. So this ratio, I have 4 in ratio to 10. And we've actually done that one already, so we know that is 40%. Okay, so pause for just a moment and see if you can find the probability of B complement before I do. And then when you get done with that, unpause and see if you got the same answer. All right, so let me scooch this up just a little bit and see if we can get all of this almost into the same view screen. So B complement, it looks like three, four, five, and six were in it. So if the outcomes not in B are zero, one, two, um, seven, eight, and nine. So if I look at that, there are one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's do this. I see my right parentheses, equal sign. I've got six out of 10, and that is 60%, okay? So there's your, your basic or your classical approach to probability. And let's figure out, or let's pick up our basic rules of probability and talk about what we're gonna, what's gonna be governing us as we move through the next few pages. So if we look at this, okay, and let me move this up. There we go. So your basic probability rules. For any event I give you, your answer, if you have a P with some crap in your parentheses, it's gotta be a decimal between zero and one. So every probability is a number, a decimal between zero and one. I'm gonna rewrite this because it's so important and students have um, trouble remembering this every year. Every probability is a decimal or number, if you will, between zero and one. The probability for your sample space needs to total out to one because something has to happen. This goes back to when the sum of our relative frequencies, when we made um, relative frequency distributions back in chapter one, had to add up to one. Something has to happen. If they don't total out to one, you're missing some event in your sample space, or excuse me, some outcome in your sample space. Here, we're gonna officially pick up the first of our five major rules. And I mentioned this at the very top of the chapter in the video, but we're gonna pick up formula one officially. And this is one of those formulas that is valid for every problem you're ever going to run into. So the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. And we refer to this as the addition rule, all right? It's super important. Again, it's, it's valid for every problem I'll give you. I'm gonna repeat it. The probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Or sometimes you'll hear me refer to this as the overlap. So the probability of A, probability of B minus their overlap, okay? So the combination is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of their overlap. Another rule, you're gonna hear me refer to the complement rule all the time as we move forward. So the probability of A plus the probability of A complement has to add up to one. Because either A happens or it doesn't happen. It's binary. So the likelihood that A happens plus the likelihood that A doesn't happen has to total out to one. And if you do a little algebra manipulation, Let's say you subtract this whole term to the other side, or you subtract this whole term to the other side. You get these two formulas that we will use quite often. So the probability of A not happening is one minus the probability it happens. Or on the flip of that, the probability of A happening is one minus the probability that it won't happen. And let's say this seems a little like, like hokey right now. Like, what are you talking about? So I want you to think of this. The probability of A plus its complement equals one. So let me go back down here so that all of these are in view. So take a look at the probability of A and the probability of A complement. All right, what was the probability of A? It's gonna happen 60% of the time. What was the probability A wouldn't happen? 40% of the time. What is 60% plus 
plus 40%. All right, let's think about this. The probability of A plus the probability of A complement, it was 60 plus 40, which was 1. And that's saying that when you pick one digit from that random digit table, it's either an A or it's not an A. Those are your two options. Every digit I'm ever going to pick. Right? If I just take my random digit table again and I place my pencil, I'm not, I have my eyes closed. I know you can't see it. Oops, see, it's definitely closed because I didn't even hit a digit. If I have my eyes closed, I hit a digit, right? That digit was two. This digit had to either be an A or not an A. Those are the two options. It happened to be an A. It was a digit two. Okay, but it, it might not have been an A. And again, every digit I picked was either going to be an event A or not an event A. This was true if we look at it for B and B complement. Right, so if I look here, the probability of B plus the probability of B complement. Well, the probability of B was 40%. The probability of B complement was 60%. Okay. And those totaled out to 1 because every digit you pick, it's either in B or not in B because it's a binary option. So uh, those probabilities have to add up to 1. Every digit I pick, it's either an event B or it's not an event B. And so since those are complementary, that's where you're getting these other formulas that I tend to use quite often that I mentioned just here at the end. The probability of A complement is 1 minus the probability of A. The probability of A is 1 minus the probability of A complement. So this isn't an official term, but I call this the complement rule. All right. So I will frequently use the complement rule when trying to calculate probabilities or their complements.